Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. What's going on YouTube, Diggy546? Definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like the video if you like the video. And I won't tell if you click that bell. But let's go ahead and get into this. All right, so I wanted to answer the question that has been kind of in my head for like the last four or five, who, who knows how many weeks. Should the Giants be tanking? Should we be tanking when, at the end of the day, I feel like the goal of watching football the goal of watching sports in, in general, this is all a big game. We, we, we have these YouTube channels, we have uh, TV, we have all these mediums where we consume not only sports, but we literally watch people, as you're doing right now, talk about sports. But at the end of the day, all of this is not as serious as, as we make it out to be. All of this is about a game. It's about a game that guys are running around out there on a, on a field and people pay to watch these people play. Why do people pay to watch anything? Because they want it to be entertaining. And I feel like the Giants have not been entertaining until this uh, whole Tommy DeVito fiasco popped off. And uh, last game, not really as much entertaining, but we, we watched this for entertaining, for entertainment. And at the end of the day, can I watch a game and that I'm supposed to be watching for entertainment and say, I want my team to lose in like the most boring way. I just can't, I just can't do that because it's just not entertaining to me. And then at that point, it's like, it's like I'm at work or it's like I'm, I'm doing my duty. And, and I'm like, that, that kind of doesn't make sense to me to watch something for fun and root for my team to lose. So that's one point. And then the next point is we really, <laughs> For the for the most part, we really need new blood in here. At probably at the quarterback position, probably at wide receiver, probably at a couple other positions where getting a higher pick will help us, and it'll help us to be entertaining for years to come. So that's that's another perspective to it. But should the Giants be this is this isn't even gonna be about the Giants because think about it, folks. As I've said in, in my post games in like the last month. Does Isaiah Simmons in that Washington game, in that Commanders game, say, I just caught this interception. I think I'm going to fumble it uh, so no team picks me up next year and I just look goofy. And, and, and I I could return this for a pick six and be on teams' radars of like, oh, this guy Isaiah Simmons, the former first-round pick, is still balling. He still has that potential to make big plays. Or I could just you know drop this on purpose and, and make sure we get Caleb Williams and I might not even be on the team next year. So... It makes no sense for, for him. It makes no sense for Tommy DeVito, who's fighting for his NFL future. It makes no sense for any of these guys to lose games on purpose. So we're not, this isn't about the Giants. This is about what fans want. Should we, as fans, be rooting for our team to lose? And I say, it's, any, it's anyone's opinion. It's anyone's opinion. You cannot tell people how to fan. And I, I take that very literally. Why would I, if, if someone's arguing with you, about whether your team should win or lose and whether you should root for that, if they're arguing with you, that means they probably care about the team. So if you care about, I don't argue about things that I don't care about. If you care about the team enough to, to really construct an argument and be in a heated argument and debate about the team needs to lose because this, this, and this, you're not a fake fan. So I'm not going to criticize you for that. Um, my thing is this. I think... I think it's in our best interest. If, if you were to say, take our medicine, it's in our best interest to lose these next three games against the Eagles, which I cannot stand. I would always love to beat the Eagles against the Eagles, the Rams, and the Eagles. And of course, like I said, I would love to, to beat the Eagles in a game that, you know, snatches away their opportunity to get the first seed or snatches their way to, to, to get the division. I would love that. But also, we could possibly pick, be picking 15. And picking like 15 or 13 or something ridiculous like that, that could uh, completely put us out of playoff, uh, not playoff contention. It complete, completely take us out of the quarterback discussion. That means that we have to probably use a first round pick that includes that pick, a next year's pick, another year's pick after that, both seconds this year, and probably a fourth round pick to move from 15 all the way up to two or three or four, that's going to take a lot of resources. Whether 
and, and then the other the other uh kind of way to look at that is is you're picking at number five or you're picking at number three if you want to move up to number one from three i mean you might give up next year's first this year's first and a second this year or two seconds it, it's not going to be much to move down from one to three because if a team is willing to move out of that number one spot that means they're probably not targeting that quarterback so they can move to three and they'll just take a one next year and a two this year or two twos this year and a one next year and they, that won't be an issue but if you're picking at 15 that they're not going to move down that far a team that bad is not going to give up an opportunity to take a player of that caliber at number one they're not they're not going to move down that far so you have to move down from 15 to four or from 15 to five and then you have to move from five to one and you know when you do that you're selling the farm so as much as i would love to go out on christmas day and this is not me rooting against it. As much as I would love to go out on Christmas Day and beat the Philadelphia Eagles on uh, on, on primetime TV, I'm pretty sure that'd be primetime because it's Christmas Day. I'm pretty sure that's the only game on. As much as I would love to see that, at the same time, it's really not in the best interest of the New York Giants to win these last three games. I think at this point, You've kind of gotten the, the the idea that Tommy DeVito can be your backup quarterback of the future. You've kind of gotten the idea that a lot of these people on defense are good players. Um, you got guys like Andrew Thomas and Dexter Lawrence are probably two best players on the team, and they're fighting through injury. They're fighting through injury to 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 finish this season out, which says a lot for your culture, says a lot for their leadership and their toughness. But at the same time. Maybe Dave will still walk up to, to, to both of them and say, we're shutting you down for the season. Because not to say Dable is going to lose on purpose, but there's not as much to gain culture-wise. I, I think they've them getting to the five wins this year after the dumpster fire that we were in is a good enough result to say, you know, we, we've proven that we can that we can maintain our culture and, and be a competitive team. I think that has kind of been solidified but you do not want to risk losing one of these guys late in the season and having that roll over into next season. I'm thinking at this point, we're definitely going to take a quarterback. It just matters where that's, that's really it. And it matters who we can try to partner up with to move up. Or if those guys are just going to be gone and we got to take a guy second round, but who we're going to partner with to move up. Um, that 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 all is is probably going to happen regardless just just on the sake of daniel jones having the injuries that kind of scares people but um like i said guys like dexter lawrence guys like andrew thomas fighting through injury uh all these guys could possibly be shut down could possibly be in in, in situations where you just let them rest you lose these last three games you pick top four you pick top five and you can really make something happen in this organization. It is in the best interest for Brian Dable and for Joe Shane to take a quarterback and to lose and get a quarterback that high because that gives them at least two years with that quarterback. If the rookie quarterback comes in here and they win five games or six games next year, they will 100% get one more year with that rookie quarterback to show some growth. But if they come out next year with Daniel Jones after they paid him and they say Daniel Jones is going to be our starting quarterback and he goes out there and he gets hurt again or he goes out there and he wins three, four games and he throws for another 12 touchdowns, they're gone. And I think Brian Dable and Joe Shane are a good coach and a good general manager. But if they do that, they'll be doing it to themselves. They'll be doing it to themselves. And again, you can guarantee yourself two more years or you can be gone after next year because at this point in year six, do you expect Daniel Jones to be a completely different person and, and, and just all of a sudden be a different player and save your jobs? So that's something we have to think about. But nonetheless, one of these last three games is not something that benefits us. And the sh in the long term, I mean, the short term that night will be happy. Like we beat the Eagles. Great. Amazing. I'll be very happy. You won't see me come on and say, but we, you know, but we lost our draft. 
I'll be I'll be excited if we beat the Eagles just because I just can't stand them. But beyond that short term excitement, when you get to to the draft and you see uh, this player get taken at five and this player get taken at six and this player get taken at four and this team be able to trade up to number one because this thing is for sale. But you don't have the position or the you know, you don't have the position to trade up when you see all of that going on. It's not going to feel as good. <laughs> that we won these these games that we will not remember at all. Um, that That's kind of where I'm seeing this from now, for, for, for now. Um, I don't think it really benefits us much to win these last couple of games. Tommy DeVito, like I said, has gotten his shine. All the people have kind of set the things in tone that I wanted to see for this season. I'm not sold at all on Eric Gray. Um, he just hasn't gotten opportunities, and he also just hasn't, just he hasn't jumped off the page, and I'm kind of disappointed there. Um, Trey Hawkins didn't really get much opportunity, but for the most part, things that I wanted to see, I got to see this year. I feel pretty solid about our backup defensive tackle depth um, after Leo got traded. So I think we've seen enough, and I think at this point, I've kind of moved on emotionally from the season, and uh, it, it's up in the air, folks. You guys let me know what you're thinking of as far as should the Giants be tanking and should we be rooting for the Giants to tank or should we be rooting for the Giants to win every game because we're fans and we want to see them win the games? Because at the end of the day, we want them to, you know, get, go out and get a new quarterback and get all these shiny new things so they can win games. But if we want to see them win games, then why don't we want to see them win games right now? It, it, it's, it's, it's a catch 22. So what are you guys thinking of the situation? Those are my thoughts on it. Hopefully, no matter what happens, we can get the guy at quarterback that this coaching staff and that this general manager wants. You made it this deep into the video. Come on, just hit the subscribe button. I make Giants content primarily, draft content secondarily. And during the season, I'm going to be doing a lot of reacting to pretty much most of the NFL games and everything NFL. So if you made it this deep, go ahead and join the D6 squad.